I am at Egan Gardens today with Ellen Egan. And Ellen, you know, there's so much buzz, sorry, the pun, about pollinators and attracting them to our gardens. So what are you thinking of? And um, do we need 40 acres to do that? No, bees have lost so much habitat that any little thing that everybody can do will help. Um, so we can be careful to spray carefully and we can plant lots of plants that they like. And so you can, if all you have is a porch, put a whole lot of pollinator plants in a very small space. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. So here's a planter that has Kufia. This is Kufia vermilionaire, and it's a wonderful hummingbird attractor, but bees love it too. Lantana Ooh. attracts bees butterflies and hummingbirds Pretty. and it's beautiful um, this little daisy a um, an osteospermum called voltage yellow will be a great butterfly attractor and the zinnias everything likes in this planter here which is the pink and purple people planter because sometimes people don't like orange but really and our pollinators attracted to all colors aren't they yeah you know they say that they like yellow and orange but I see the hummingbirds <laughs> go to blue lobelia I see the bees on purple salvia. So this is just plain old annual salvia. Gorgeous. Uh, verbena. This lovely fragrant thing is opal innocence nemesia. I can smell it. Oh, really it nice. Just smells wonderful and all the pollinators smell it and nice. go to it. And heliotrope. This is a cute little short heliotrope called merino blue. If you were using the tall fragrant delight you'd probably use that as a center plant but merino can stay on the side. Nice. So you've got something to appeal to all kinds of pollinators and to the people who have them on their porch. <laughs> and then other rules that when we're putting containers together, can you give us a couple tips? Oh, I like to use a the whole spectrum of colors in every planter I make. I like to have the red, yellow, blue shades or the pink, yellow, blue shades. I left the yellow out of the pink, purple. Well, there's a little people. yellow in here, there yeah. too, though. Um, if it's just too hot or it's just too cool, then to me it doesn't look balanced. Right. Um, unless you're an unbalanced personality and you like things unbalanced, in which case that's all right. And yeah, I of course that. it is, of course it is. And what about care? Are we watering them, fertilizing them? What about that? Yes. First you start with a big pot. This is a 14 inch nice. wide, 12 inch deep tub that has enough root room to support the plants. I use good quality potting soil. Make sure you don't pick up somebody's bargain soil that's just somebody's Christmas tree that got composted for a couple of months. <laughs> and a good quality fertilizer. I recommend the Proven Winners brand and we carry that here. Nice, and then what about watering? And it's gonna be really warm. We're finally getting into mm -hmm. summertime. Yeah. When plants are newly planted, they don't need nearly as much water as they will later on. And even though we're having a 90 degree day now, it's not going to stay that warm. By the time it's August, you're going to be watering every day. Right. And on really hot days, a planter in the sun will probably need morning and evening watering. But for right now, probably once every other day on a big tub is going to be fine. So uh, planters don't have to be that much care. Right, right. They are really easy. Right. Of course, yeah. of course. And they are really that easy. And you can come out to Egan Gardens, talk to Ellen and her staff, and you can see how easy it is to pick out lots of flowers and really invite all those pollinators to your garden. Ellen, thanks for making it so easy. Well, you're welcome.